Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this month's uh, Contour community meeting. Uh, very happy to have you all here. Uh, today, we have a few things that we want to cover. And I'm going to share my screen here so you can see the agenda. Just do that. And there we go. So um, on today's agenda on July 16th of 2019 or 17th, depending on where you are in the world here, uh, the agenda today, um, what we've been working on, we're going to talk about a blog post that uh, Steve just posted. Um, then we're going to talk about some secure communication between Contour and, on Contour and Envoy that's been going on. Uh, we want to talk about the upcoming release, uh, which is 0 0.14. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Um, Steve, do you want to start with your blog post? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, do you want me to share my screen maybe? And I can walk through it. Cool. So I will share, where is it? This guy. Okay, so um, if you uh, need to spin up clusters locally on your machine, there are a couple different ways to do that. Um, I used to run a Vagrant box and I would do a kube admin init to build me like a, a cluster locally. Um, and then Minikube is another thing that you can use, uh, which again, spins up a VM on your machine. Um, and it's been around sort of longer than this next tool we're going to talk about. Um, so it works well. Uh, the difficulty with, with Minikube, I think, is you, you can only do a single node cluster. Um, so this other tool has come out, which is called Kind. Um, and it stands for Kubernetes in Docker. That's where the Kind comes from. Um, so what it does, cool, is that it uses only Docker under the hood to then build out a cluster. So this now allows you to um, spin up, you know, a multi-node uh, cluster if you need to do on, on your own local laptop or desktop or whatever environment you're running in. Um, and all you really need under that hood is Docker, whereas other, other ways you need some sort of virtualization software and, and other things like that. Um, so another cool thing about Kind is that it's fast. So you can basically spin up a cluster quickly, kill it, and recreate, recreate a new one, which is nice. Um, so uh, being that I use Kind a lot, I figured I would document some of this um, in a blog post, just to kind of walk through in a little more detail kind of how this works. Um, so if you want, you can watch a video. I did a whole YouTube video on this that again walks through this whole thing, uh, which is well, fun sometimes to, to fill in the missing gaps that the blog post may miss. Um, but the, the, big, the big steps to get this running are first you need to go to get kind on your machine somehow, and it's just a little binary. Uh, once you have that, then we can go ahead and create a cluster. Um, so the, the normal way to do it is you just say kind create cluster. Uh, and that's going to create you a one node cluster. Uh, but for what we're going to do with Contour here, we want to pass in some configuration things. Um, and you can do that with Kind through one of these configuration files. Um, and out here on Kind, there is a whole docs um, section on what that looks like, which I think is under, under here, um, down here at the bottom. Yeah. So here you can talk about enabling different features and stuff in your, in your cluster. Um, so have a look at that. It's, 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 it's a good thing to look at in terms of like how you want to create multi-node clusters. You can even do an HA control plane um, and kind of get really, really intricate with, with some of this testing. Uh, but what we want to focus on today is this way that we can pass in basically port mappings. Um, so the problem with Kind in the past was that when we spun up Contour, there was no ports or there weren't any ports exposed to let us send traffic to Contour and then and subsequently Envoy. Uh, so now what we can do with this new config, and this is in the 0.4 release of kind, is we can pass in this configuration file. And what this does is, and this is just my example, you could change it to your, to your own liking. Um, but here I'm going to map port 80 to your host as well as port 443. Uh, you may also map like a node port, you know, in the 30,000 range, something like that. Uh, but what I want to do is kind of mimic what I would do out in my, you know, production environment or staging environment. And that would be sending requests to 80 and 443. Um, so basically, if you save this to a file and then pass it into the kind create command, you'll basically create, you'll get a, a mapping of um, port 80 to your host, which, which, is, which is cool. Um, now, the only downside of this is because you only have one port 80 on your local machine, uh, you can only do this, you only have a one node cluster, one node worker cluster. So that's the only caveat you'd have to, to look at too, which I think I note here, yeah. Um, cool, so once you have that up and running, you can go ahead and deploy Contour. Um, and I'm using the daemon set, um, the split model, which I think Dave's going to talk about some of the work we've done with that recently. Um, this is where you deploy Contour as a deployment, 
and then Envoy as a daemon set. So it runs one instance on every node. Um, and then also in this model, we use this thing called host networking. So when the pod spins up, it binds your port 80 or 443 directly to the host, which is great because now that we bind that to the host, because we've configured the port mapping back to your machine through this, you basically have a, a full path into your, into your cluster now. Once you have that running, then you can deploy your applications and then get things running and test it out. Um, by, I think I used QWERTY.local, yeah. Um, so a request sends, gets sent to QWERTY.local and then that gets routed to your Docker node, which gets, hits Envoy and then the request gets, gets fulfilled by the, the backend service. So have a look at that. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can go through that um, or we can look at it more if we have time. So uh, just a simple question here. So if I wanted to run another, uh, another sample application on port 80, um, so you got cord uh, running and I wanted to run uh, another small web server. All I needed to, to do would be to create another ingress route. Would that be correct? Yeah, uh -huh, sure. So yeah, so once you have your, because you've got this path now into your, into your ingress controller. Um, so typically if you deployed this say to AWS, you would spin up some sort of load balancer. So like an ELB or an NLB or something like that. And you would direct all your traffic at that load balancer. And then that load balancer would send traffic to, to Contour. Um, we've sort of done that the same way now. So everything on localhost is now getting routed to um, Contour or Envoy. So in this example, we're, we're, we're matching the slash. So this domain name, cordy.local, and then slash is getting all of the requests. Um, so we could create basically new names if you wanted to. So I could create like, you know, steve.sloka or whatever domain name I wanted to. Um, and I could create new paths as well. So, you know, slash blog goes to a different service. And then when I hit that path locally, you know, Contour and, and Envoy are gonna then redirect the traffic to the right backend service. Cool, thank you. Very cool, yeah. Uh, we also have, just to go in our docs a little bit, so if you go to the main repo, um, there are some more docs that explain, um, if we go to docs and then deploy options. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, a deployment or a daemon set, why we'd use one or the other. Um, and then also how to do things on Minikube as well as in kind. Um, so there's, again, some more documentation here outside of the, the blog post and how to test and stuff. So that's a good place to check out as well. That's all I have. Any that's questions? Great. Um, thank you. Can I drive? Cause there's, there's yeah. one more thing I want. Can I drive the screen? Yep. All right. Yeah. Let me see if I go ahead and share my screen because why, why would anyone like, like use a browser to like read a document when I can share my screen of my browser reading the document? Right. Okay. The, the thing that I wanted to add, um, and why and how that makes all this card magic, uh, and in fact, fact the Minikube magic work together, um, is a change that we actually landed in 0 0.13. Um, prior to that, because of a long running, um, limitation in Envoy, Envoy basically needed you to tell it the port that the request was going to come in on. Um, so for, so in kind of like in production settings, you're going to, your ports are going to be 80 and 443, but in setups like kind and especially Minikube, which kind of just choose a random port when they start up, you need to kind of, you, there, there is a requirement to, to thread that kind of ephemeral port all the way through all the different to Envoy and then to any mappings and things like that. Um, th th this was just so that because when you actually type in like localhost, you know, colon 55555, some browsers will actually include that uh, suffix, that, f that port number in the host header, and then it wouldn't match what Envoy is expecting. Nothing, nothing works. So prior to 0 0.13, we, we had to ask you to tell us the numbers, the port numbers that we're using. Um, with these two flags, um, Envoy external HTTP and HTTPS port. That was super annoying. Uh, fortunately in 0 0.13, we figured a way around this. And so that's how we can make um, user experience for not just uh, kind deployments on laptops, but just in any situation where you don't necessarily um, know the port that's gonna be forwarded through to, to Envoy. So uh, th this is kind of a way of saying, it used to be really annoying and we fixed it and now you don't need to worry about it. But this, this certainly improves the deployment experience for everybody because now you don't need to kind of thread these magic numbers through everything. Uh, 
I can't see the chat, Jonas. So if there are any questions, um, uh, maybe you, you can call them out. Yep. Otherwise, um, okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's move on to the part that Steve alluded to, which is um, this work we're doing uh, to split Contour and Envoy. Um, let's, let's give a bit of background here. Um, So since the earliest days, we've had uh, this directory of different deployment examples. Um, Kubernetes is very flexible. Um, you may want to deploy Contour and Envoy in a bunch of different ways. Um, the obvious one is daemon set or deployment. Um, like it, it, uh, and the, the next extension of that is to maybe split them between, uh, split the life cycles of Contour and Envoy into separate pods and that's what um, this DS hostnet split is. Um, this, uh, this, ver this differs from the other examples that you have in that uh, rather than deploying uh, a pod with two containers in it, it deploys uh, two, uh, a pod, two different sets of pods. One related to a, a, a daemon set which are the envoys which are on the host network and the other relating to the contours, which are the control plane, which are just a standard deployment kind of kind of thing. Um, this means that the life cycles of these two different processes are different. They no longer, if you change, if you made a change to the configuration of contour, would it cause Envoy to restart because they're now separate? Um, and also, dep depending on the size of your installation, you probably want a, you know, a one, two, three contours for kind of uh, for, for redundancy, but you may want an envoy deployed on every one of your hosts. Um, so that's why you would, you, would, you would go down a model like this. Um, this is something we've been doing for over for over a year now. Um, but one of the the drawbacks of this model is uh, the authentication of the pro uh, the communication between contour and envoy um, is not based on kind of like like keys and passwords or things like that. It uh, because it's gRPC, it leverages TLS and it uses client-side certificates. And so the big piece of work that um, has been worked on in 0 0.14, we'll be um, doing some more spin polish on it in the next release, is to make, uh, add the ability to secure the trans, the traffic between Contra and Envoy um, using, using TLS certificates. Um, so there is a bunch like this adds a bunch of um, moving parts again, which we've added some added some stuff, and I'll do a demo uh, to show you how we've kept that new user experience. But I need to go through a few things because depending on uh, your company's security posture or like the way that you do certificates, you may you may not want to use the stuff that we provide, and I, I want to call out the points where you can integrate your own um, if you have like. Vault or something like that. You you have your own CA. You're signing your own keys. The places that you would integrate, um, integrate that. Uh, just going to pause uh, pause for a minute. If there are any questions about this kind of overall, otherwise we can jump into a demo. No questions in the chat. So I want to call out. If you have any questions, <clears throat> you can write them in the chat. Or if you would rather just speak to us directly, you can just unmute as well. Uh, but no questions right now, Dave. Okay, cool. So what I might do is we'll do a demo and then we'll come back to kind of like then show you how that how that magic worked. Um, so this is my httpin.davechini.com is contour running live. You all can go and hit it now. Um, this is served. Uh, uh, there's a there's a HTTP bin. Uh, it's a C name to GKE. GKE is uh, just a an ELB that um, Google Cloud gives me. It's got a timeout of one minute. We'll see why in a second. So, and let's have a look at. Um, so this is uh, using the uh, what is basically our default um, at the moment, which is two pods, two two containers co-located. So that's why you see two of two. You have an envoy and a contour in a single pod. Um, so let's get rid of that. Now it's broken. 
as we expect. Um, So let's apply the uh, the hostnet split. Let's have a quick look at. Uh, so now we have uh, separate pods for Contour and Envoy. Um, you can see now they have one of one. So let's just quickly. Um, so they are now have separate pods. One one is driven by a deployment, which is the Contour. So that has just a set, a small set of replicas. We just have two in this example, um, and the envoy daemon set. Uh, sorry, is envoy is a daemon set. We have one per node. So as the number of nodes in this cluster goes up and down, um, it it can follow that. Um, we also have a job, which I'll come back to in a second. So uh, let's just see if they're all up and running. So I just need to pause for effect because because we've split them, they now have separate services. So GK has moved the port 80 and port 443 from my original contour service and it's just spinning up another IP here. So I just kind of need to pause for effect until we get that IP and then I'm gonna put it in um, Google domains. So while that's happening, um, let's, Let's quickly look at um, uh, no, nope, that's the service. So this is this is the envoy daemon set. This is the spec for uh, the spec for it. And if we go down, we see that the only real difference between how you may be used to the, the contour deployment looking is that there is in now a configuration uh, a configuration volume and also ones related to certificates we're using um, what people call mutual tls it is a uh, we have created ca that ca then signs two certificates one that contour holds one that envoy holds and because they're both uh, signed by the same ca they trust each other um, that is that is the the authentication mechanism that so as well as mounting those secrets in volumes and then referring to them, referring to them later, nothing's really changed. Um, there are there are some uh, small small changes to the boot, but the Bootstrap configuration just to say you'll find use certificates and you'll find them here. Um, so let me just so. Quickly. I hope that doesn't log me out. I had this window open since last night. Okay, so that we're just going to wait for that to propagate quickly, and let's have a quick look at. So again, on the contour side, it needs to know its CA and its certificates so that they all all the bits line up. Um, do the same thing through mounting through volumes. Uh, Okay, so I have let's go magic command line. While we're waiting for the DNS to propagate, we can do this magic through curl. Um, yeah, that's okay. So all, all this curl line is saying when curl expects to talk to HTTP in four four three, actually connect to this IP address. So it's a Easy way of doing host name hacking, um, lo 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 local host, um, EDC hosts hacking. Um, and I reckon if we've been fast, then, yep, that's that's running. So we now have a split contract Envoy deployment running. Um, you, you saw there was no configuration that I needed to do, like it was just applying the straight, um, the example, uh, the, the example we have, and we have. And the communication between Contour and Envoy is uh, now secure. So if you don't trust the underlying network or you don't trust your network environment which your, um, your service is deployed into, um, now, now there is uh, 
both authentication and authorization uh, between those two. Between those two, um, nobody can connect to Envoy's gRPC service unless they have Contour certificate, um, and those both those certificates live inside um, live inside the Contour namespace. So if your RBAC is working um, as as appropriate, then people can't access that. Um, so yeah, if there if there are any questions, speak up now. So I have um, just one question here. So you're uh, generating the the certificate yourself. Uh, would it be possible to utilize other certificate methods? Yes. Uh, let, let, let me let me talk a little bit about that because if, even though in the um, in these examples, they, there's this very pithy kind of these certificates just come from somewhere. Actually, doing that um, that mechanics. Um, if you were to do it by hand with OpenSSL is a little bit annoying. Um, CA, you have to make a key pair, you have to then create a pair of self-signed certificates, you have to push them all into certificates. We outline all of like this, this document is how you could do it by hand. If you wanted to do it by hand, this is how you could do it. However, what we provide um, is a job. Now, the way that, so when you first deploy um, the hostnet example, there's actually a job in there which is a, a different contour command, it's called search in. Just like you used to bootstrap, it will create these certificates. Um, there's, no, there's no requirement for these certificates to be signed by like a public certificate authority. It's literally, the thing that secures all this trend uh, is a random number. We make up the um, search in makes up a random number. It creates two other random numbers based on the first one and then throws the original random number away so it cannot be used. So if we look at the the um, the secret, um, we only have the public part of the secret. We've thrown away the uh, private part, which means this this can't this is not a general purpose certificate generation mechanism. It it, it just does enough to generate the um, the parts that Contour and Envoy need, and then throws away the rest. So it can't e e even if this CA leaked out, it couldn't be used to sign additional clients. Um, so this is how we've automated this kind of long and annoying OpenSSL process, which you may not even have OpenSSL on your machine, you know, if you're in a Windows world or something like that, if you don't need to install software. So that's not a very good user experience. So what we've done is replaced it with a job. which runs once, um, so you, you don't need to uh, run every time. And the, the job actually generates a certificate, uh, writes it out to the secrets, and then uh, we, we, we say it's item potent. If you run it again, it won't do anything. So that, that's how we populate the secrets um, for you if you don't have another mechanism of doing it. This is just so we can keep a nice kind of first user experience. Um, to come back to uh, what, what I think your question was, Jonas, if you don't want to use this, that's totally okay. You don't need to use search in. There's nothing special about what it does. We outline, it, it literally is just automating these steps. We just wrote a program to run these steps. Um, we expect uh, if you are uh, in an environment that um, cares a lot about TLS between all the different services, then you'll probably have some internal key service, like maybe using something from AWS, I don't remember the name of the service at the moment, maybe you've got Vault running internally, something like that. If your environment already has the process for creating and signing certificates, not as part of like the public, public facing certificate change, but just to secure transmission between um, different parties, then all you need to do is provide, again, we, we lay out the, the three things you must do. You must have a certificate um, in this in this secret with the key of that name. Same for Contour, same for Envoy. If you if you don't want to use the thing that we wrote and you want to use uh, Vault or something like that, or maybe you have may, maybe your your admins are totally fine with doing it by hand by um, OpenSSL. You have some kind of deployment mechanism, some Ansible or something like that that will do that for you. Go right ahead. Um, who generates the certificate is not really important it's not necessary to the security of this um, and if you 
so if your security team is like, no, no, we, we would like to create those certificates, please, then we've, we've made sure that that's possible to replace in the process. Cool. Um, Thank what, you. Um, got one question here from Rob before you, mm -hmm. uh, before you continue here. Uh, so Rob asks, uh, is there any reason for us to use this in environments with already trusted networking or trusted workloads? Um, that's really, that's really up to the position of your admins and your security team. Um, one of the, so one of the, um, because the communication between Envoy and Contour is not based on kind of like a username and password or something like that. In, if you don't use TLS in this connection or you don't use client side certificates, anybody who can make a connection to the Contour's XDS, like Contour's endpoint, uh, can ask questions as if it was Envoy, which means they can ask for any of the configuration, including secrets, including endpoints, things like that. So um, when Contour and Envoy are co-located in the same pod, that communication is over localhost, so that's not a concern. When they're separated into different, into different pods and they communicate over the network, there is a potential that if you don't trust um, all of the parties in your cluster networking, then a rogue process can connect to Contour's endpoint and say, tell me all the secrets that you know. So that's the, that's the threat model that we're protecting against. Perfect. Thank you. Um, to give a little bit more, um, to give a little bit more background on where this this is going, this is more than just um, the the particular security concerns of that. We want to um, the design that probably most of it are, are used to with Contour and Envoy being co-located um, has a number of limitations. It was great for getting started, has a pretty good getting started user experience, but it has both scaling limitations and kind of operational limitations. The scaling ones are obviously Every Envoy you deploy kind of has a contour that goes with it. That's unnecessary. One contour can serve all the Envoys. That's like the reason for a data plane, uh, control plane split. The second one is that um, Envoy, sorry, contour watches a lot of things in the Kubernetes API. Watch all the endpoints, all the services, all the ingress routes. Um, it, I don't have um, a good kind of like cost estimate for what that kind of watching costs, but you can imagine watching all the endpoints in the busy cluster is a lot of traffic. Um, splitting the Contour and Envoy apart allows, allows administrators to size Contour, the data, the, the control plane to a different size and shape to Envoy, the, the serving data plane. Like you may want one, two, three contours, just to give you kind of some, some re redundancy, and I'll come back to that in a second. And you may want as many envoys as you have hosts in your fleet. Um, so that's, that's, that's a, one of the reasons for um, making, for investing in the split model. The second one is that um, the data plane and the control plane have different life cycles. Envoy uh, is roughly on about a three month cadence. Contour is on a much, uh, much shorter cadence. Um, some of most of the configuration um, that is not kind of read through the Kubernetes API is provided to Contour in the form of CLI flags. If you want to change those flags, you need to bump the deployment. At the moment, because Contour and uh, Envoy are in the same pod, changing Contour means you roll both of them. Um, it would be nice not to. It would be nice not to have to have a roll of Envoy, Envoy of the Envoy process and lose any in in process connections just because you wanted to change something about your control plane. So that's one of the, that's one of the more kind of fundamental reasons for uh, going down the, the process of this split. We want them, we, we, we want to have them to have different life cycles because they do have different life cycles. They, um, I, I, ideally, if there is no requirement for the operators to change the version, change the version of Envoy, they should be able to change the version of Contour frequently because the, uh, Envoy doesn't need the control plane to, uh, it's not involved in any of the transmission. It's only involved in changing configuration. It's totally okay if Contour goes away for a little bit while it's being restarted. And we want to enable that. Um, and I, I alluded to, I alluded to like some kind of, you know, one, two or three Contours. One of the things that is coming up is that we're going to implement leader election in Contour, just so it's more like 
some of the rest of the Kubernetes controllers, which will mean you have a small set, most of them sit idle until they win the leader election, then they become the must, then they become the, 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 the leader of the, the process group that the, the previous pod goes away, comes back, sits and waits till it becomes the master. That's the common pattern of the way that leader election works inside Kubernetes. And again, what, what, what that will mean is if you have, say, three contours deployed, only one of them is actually going to be active. It's only actually offering the listening port. And so as leader election changes between them, the cluster IP changes. And so the envoys that are communicating with that cluster IP will move to the move to the the leader of that group I'm, I'm trying not to say master it's not a not a um not a good term anymore um so this 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 work is more than just about um offering something if you are deploying in an untrusted network this is much more fundamental about making uh, contour easier to operate in at, at, at scale uh, let me find the chat. I can see, I can see the little button is going green sometimes. And Actually, more questions there right now. Uh, do you want to move into the next topic, which is the zero dot? Of course. Yeah. Okie dokie. So, what's what's coming up? Zero dot fourteen. Uh, we originally had it tagged for uh, twenty six, I think, which was next Friday. Um, given that two thirds of the team are going to be on uh, traveling or on leave in a week, we've moved it forward to um, to this Friday, just because for this no reason why Steve should sit around by himself just waiting for a week to to do the release. So we figure we'll, we'll do it we'll do it this week and then get started on zero dot fifteen. Um, in terms of the user facing features, the big one is securing the communication between Contra and Envoy. That's the big thing that we've been working towards. This has been a lot of plumbing in the background that's had to change, but in terms of user, vis uh, user visible features, uh, nothing, no, there are, there aren't, there, there aren't a lot. It, it's not like 0 0.13. We had a whole laundry list of, um, of visible changes. Most of the, the work has been behind the hood. Um, Steve, do you have any anything to add to that? I was trying to think because <laughs> I gotta I gotta work on some of those release notes for the release. Um, no, I mean that was a lot of it. There, there's a bunch of little things I think that have, that add up to be. It's kind of like the you know the the what's that term the death by a thousand cuts. You know, like where there's a bunch of little things we fixed. Um, I know there's a, a PR we have now in process to um, <clears throat> not trigger a DAG rebuild if an unrelated secret or service changes, that would be kind of a cool effect on, on larger clusters. So, um, you know, your, your ingress resources use secrets and services and most of, not most of them, but a, a, a large percentage of them, I think are not ever re referenced from ingress. Uh, but what's happening today is if a random service or secret changes in the cluster, Contour sees that and, and it triggers a rebuild, um, which is just expensive and is wasting time for, for Contour. So, um, that I think can help for certain things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have some some design docs that we're pushing towards for for some some future releases, but I don't think there's much else specific, you know, for our for our fourteen. Yeah, yeah. The, there that there'll be there'll be a bunch of things we're going to call out in the release notes. For example, um, uh, there are some, there were some flags, some command line flags, which were um, deprecated in zero dot thirteen. Um, we print a warning. Uh, saying, you know, please remove these. We've we stopped listening to them in 0 0.14. They're going to, um, they've been removed. So actually, if you have a deployment that still references them, Contour is not going to start. Um, th th this this is all part of the usual upgrading section that we put in the um, in the design document. But those are those are split split Envoy and um, make and ma making sure it it plays better with uh, with local development is. Really, really the, the key headlines from um, 0 0.14 lifecycle. Cool, awesome. Um, do we have any questions from the, the chat or anything like that regarding 0 0.14? Nothing there right now. Um, so 0 0.14, uh, getting a cut and release on Friday. Uh, we'll have the release notes. Uh, I know Steve is working on a release blog as well. So we'll have that going out um, uh, most likely on Friday 
hopefully if everything uh, if everything works um yeah awesome and we, there's yeah sorry go ahead i should say that there's there's, there's one thing um that that i i, I want to call out envoy 1.11 was released uh was it the start of the week I, it was w w within the last seven days um we have not uh, we, we, we're not going to. We, 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 we're still holding the line that um, Envoy 0 0.14, um, its companion, Contour 0 0.14, its companion is Envoy 1.10. The, re the reason for this um, is it arrived late in the cycle. Uh, but the more the more important thing is that any of the things that we would like to take advantage of that are in Envoy 1.11 um, would require code changes on our side. So there is no point in upgrading Envoy and until we until we have changed Contour to emit the right configuration to activate those features. So um, it, it's a mixture of an, abund of an abundance of caution as well as there is no driving need. But um, Envoy 1.11 will be like that'll be one of the first things that goes into 0 0.15. So if you're if you're wondering, hey, there was an Envoy release last week, why are we still running the old one? That's the answer. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, uh, there are no questions in the chat. Is there anything else you want to, oh, here, uh, we actually do have one question. Uh, Dave, uh, I'd like to work on issue number 70. Is a design doc needed? Let's pull that up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, uh, Dave. So, so, so support for adding and removing headers. Um, I had a crack at it, well, probably about a year or so ago and didn't get time to, I say, do it properly. And it was one of these things where I kind of needed it. So I just coded it and threw it out there and it, well, rightly like didn't get merged. So I was wondering like, I kind of want to get support added um, into Contour and do it correctly this time. So I'm wondering, I guess, what the next steps are. Like if you want to design doc um, or yeah, how should I go about getting that in? Sure. So. Um, the, the, the usual way that we, we, we approach this is to say, what's, what, 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 why do you need to add or remove, remove headers? Is there like, a, what would that ability let you do? What, what is the, what is the kind of underlying driver? So there's a couple of use cases. Um, one, I want to be able to set uh, like HTTP strict transport across everything going through uh, like Envoy, everything basically going out of our um, like site. Um, and we also want to be able to sanitize headers coming in. Um, there was also a request as well to be able to add a specific header for, I think it was Linkerd. Um, so there's, there's a couple of different use cases I have. That's us two of them. Yeah. So the one of the ways that we can we can kind of pull this apart is to separate each of those use cases. Um, the so to to explain the, the the problem that my team has is that every feature we add to to Contra is not just um, I mean, obviously it's things that people want, um, but Contra is a commercial product. Like we we sell commercial support on this, so everything that we add. Um, it, it, it can't just be oh, like someone someone was using this, it was useful for them. Like, I don't know if it works, like it seemed to work for them. Like every feature that we add, we have to stand behind at a, at a commercial level. So uh, when, when, when we're looking down the barrel of very large features, like the ability to add, remove and rewrite headers arbitrarily, um, that carries with it a very big support cost. So the way that, the way that I've tried to approach this is to pull it apart into the, the underlying requirements. So for example, strict transport security. Um, I, th this is uh, linked on issue 1064. One of the, uh, I, I, I don't know what the, um, the, the, the status of this is, but for, for example, why should we not, why should we not make STS the default if you are serving traffic over HTTPS? That would be, that would be my pushback. Mm -hmm. Um, then, then, then we don't need to add a. We don't need to add the ability to set that header and let people have to get the spacing and the casing and the hyphenation exactly right. We just turn. We just turn it on by default. Um, yeah. But possibly with with an option, just like we have uh, the permit insecure, where you say I want to opt out of this. 
would have an, also an option that says, you know, disable HTS, HSTS, something like that. Okay. So one, I, I'm not sure if that worked too well for my use case because I've got basically one ingress, but we're using it for gRPC as well as uh, like web applications, like website. So I don't. There's not much point setting setting the header on the gRPC like requests or responses, but for like the other sites, there is. Okay, so th this would definitely be at the uh, ingress route. Which is the, route. Yeah. The, the, the virtual host and poten potentially if it needs to be down at the um, the sub route level so that there, there are really three places that we can talk about configuration which is um, at the contour level like that is effectively for the cluster like mm -hmm. those are flags which are on contour the process and so an administrator basically uh, to give you an example is one is um, permit root namespaces which is Contour will only look in these particular places for ingress route records. That's a cluster-wide change. The next inner scope of that is the virtual host, which is the, um, the ingress route route, which is the details about the particular host, its header, its TLS properties. And then the, the next one under that is the particular um, route prefix, which is, we, and we, 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 to give an example there, at a per route level, you can opt into WebSockets. So, we have, we, we have different levels which we can apply this configuration. We should talk about which is the, the most appropriate. It sounds like the most appropriate here is a, a at the host level. Okay. What about other headers that aren't, like I say, common or like standards? And so there's like the strict transport security. Yeah, sure. You could you could set a uh, like have a specific config for that. Um, the other use case that was mentioned in the ticker was like setting a specific header for LinkedIn. Yep. Um, so I, I, I fully, I fully admit that this is like by, by taking the general facility and trying to find specific use cases out, we still, we're not solving the general problem, but the general problem is large and requires our support people to be experts on every possible permutation as could be. This is, this is somewhat of a decision that's out of my control. Um, so the, what, what, what I can offer is that we can work towards, um, solving, solving individual problems, but getting, uh, adding the general support for header, adding and rewriting, um, that would definitely need a, a design document and it's going to need a lot of buy-in from a lot of people. Okay. So, um, my, my, uh, my, my, my offer to you is that we can, we can do strict transport security and that probably means that your application itself might have to set the other headers and stuff, if that's possible. I know sometimes people back in onto static sites and that they don't have that, op that option, but um, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be very open with what are the commercial pressures that I face developing this product that it, I, I, unfortunately, a, like a single contribution that like solves the, the problem, like we, we have to maintain them in forever. We can't remove these features after they're added. So, yeah, that totally makes sense. So, yeah. So, um, so well, any other design doc for it then, and like getting the feedback there, or should I not even like try doing that? Well, um, Steve, what, what do you think? Like, so uh, if part of the, the bigger picture of moving towards um, Contour 1.0 is that we're doing another revision of ingress route. Like we realize there are some limitations in that. Um, and uh, w w w one, one of the, the routing problems that we're, we're working on at the moment is the ability to route on a header. Like some people want to route on user agent, they want to route on like, you know, kind of AB testing type headers. Um, and so I would defer any, I would defer any discussion of adding and removing headers until we have some idea of how we're going to, how that affects routing and how that affects delegation. Okay. Yeah, I think these, these use cases are, are super helpful as well. I mean, um, I, you know, working with Dave for the last year or so, it's, he's taught me a lot of like, you know, like we, we get requests a lot like, hey, you know, this other controller does it this way. Can we just add that thing? Um, and I, I think this, it's, it's helpful to chat about like, what do you want to do with that? You know, um, so I think the design doc would be a great start to, to discuss like, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And they come up with a way to solve that, um, just so we don't get stuck in that. We've always done it this way, so let's just add the same thing again. Um, 
and then you know see where it fits. I, I think that's there's valid use cases to to do that um, all over the place. Yeah, I think it would just chat. Yeah, write up a doc and then it'd be a great start, and then we can discuss. It there. Okay. Yeah, uh, just re repeating what Steve said. Uh, having a doc to look at with use cases, other use cases you can think of. <coughs> excuse me, would be fantastic. But I think one of the reasons that uh, uh, people like Contour is that its surface area is, is small and much simpler than some uh, same functionality, but a smaller surface area. So uh, we, we try to really keep to that. So that's why we're careful about how we accept new features. They really need to fit um, into the shape of, of the rest of the system. So it's, it's not a no, it's let's think about this and be, be careful, just to be clear, Dave. Yeah, okay, no, that's fair enough. Great, thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Dave. Um, really good discussion here. Uh, do you have uh, anything to, um, anything else to add here, uh, David Cheney, uh, before we, uh, we end the call? I do not. Um, yeah, I, th I think. Yeah, I, th I think we can call it here ten minutes early because I'm going to get kicked out of this room any minute. So, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for for joining today. Uh, really, really appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten, uh, and um, yeah, uh, we really appreciate these uh, these calls with you all as well. Uh, as you all know, these are every third Tuesday. So uh, this the next. Uh, contour community call uh, will be on August 20th. So we'll see you all then and we hope you all have a fabulous rest of the week. Have a good one. Thank you, Thank you so much.